So I think we have to have um, some sort of resolution of some of this, at least a, an initial pass on the things that are urgently pressing on your minds at this point. We have plenty of time tomorrow as well for a second session on this, but let's, let's at least get some of this resolved. So let's try some of the folks who haven't spoken yet. Nita, do you want to start? So thanks for uh, an incredibly interesting panel. Um, of discussions, I guess it wasn't a panel, but individuals. I, I wanted to start with a question for you, Sam, on um, on your resolution that there are moral truths that we uh, that we should be able to turn to, and um, specifically with some of the examples that you threw out. Right. So one of the examples you used was does for forcing women to wear burqas um, have any increase in net happiness, and the second one was. Um, that cruelty is wrong and something that we can uh, all agree upon. And they're, they're quite different in their claims, right? One is a general claim and one is a quite specific claim. Um, and I would guess that you would have a hard time getting agreement on the first, which is a more specific claim, that there would be quite a diversity of opinion on that one. Um, and more likely to get uh, acceptance on the second one, that cruelty is uh, wrong and yet quite a diversity of opinion as to what cruelty would mean. Um, so I'm wondering how you could uh, resolve right, the, the tension between those. What, at what level of specificity do you mean that there are moral truths? Is it the more specific claim like uh, does forcing women to wear burqas increase net happiness? Do you mean it at the more general level like cruelty? And um, if you mean it one of, at one of those levels, how do we know and how do we, how, how do we find that moral truth? answer for you apart from saying that there is a right answer whether or not we're in a position to find it. I mean, it, if we could run this experiment, uh, all possible moral uh, communities exist and attempt to flourish by their own lights. There will be true statements whether or not we can verify them or not about one community being enjoying more well-being than another. And some of them are obvious and we can verify them and we can see the the economic and social and, um, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, moral deprivation of certain communities. Uh, and we can see some of the variables that conspire to make them that way. I mean, if you look, if you go into a failed state and you see a situation where there is virtually <coughs> no attachment uh, except for tribal attachment and no trust between strangers uh, and, you know, limbs are being piled up and machetes are being wielded, um, we can look at that and say, okay, there's many, very, many variables are in play, and we know something about how people get to that condition and people get to this, you know, the, the, the polite condition of a polite conversation, uh, you know, with, with openness to evidence and, and no appeals to force that we're enjoying now in, in our context. And so I think, um, uh, I think we'll know much more about the details uh, as we know more about the, the physical basis of, of human flourishing. And I think, that, again, I mean, the, once, once you agree that morality relates to the well-being of conscious creatures like ourselves, then all, all, the wor all the hard work is still ahead of you. I mean, that doesn't answer the question, what is eudaimonia, ultimately? And if, if we can ma actually ma manipulate our own nervous system 100 years from now, if we can actually dial in different states of of the nervous system and even dial in different moral intuitions, then, then the, the question really opens up. I mean, what is actually optimal? What will flourishing <coughs> consist of if we ever arrive in such a place like that? But yeah. it's, um, I, th I, think we, I think the ground truth we have to get to is it is about consequences in conscious experience, and it's not about uh, uh, superstition-based abstractions. Yeah. Could I come in on that? Could I add something? Um, Sam, I, I think that there, um, there are sort of two, uh, two different kinds of claims you're making. Um, the claim that there is a moral truth, and eventually we could find it with science, is one that I think many people would find uh, difficult to go along with. At the other extreme, your claim that sometimes we can say something, sometimes we can say that something is better or worse than something else, I think is absolutely right, and I'm certainly with you on that. So when you point to a failed state where there is no trust, 
no government, no care for children, uh, where people are forced by others who have no concern for them to do things. Um, we can agree that is bad. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. When you have the morality police in, uh, charged with uh, being able to do whatever they want to women with no supervision, that's bad. That's going to lead to terrible outcomes. So uh, if you think that me and Josh Green are relativists who believe that if three people think something is right, that makes it right, or at least that we can't criticize it, well, no. Very few people, uh, very few thinking people would ever endorse such a, such a statement. Um, but if you're going to be a moral monist and say there is a truth, and we can find it, and the way we find it is by counting up well-being, utility, mm -hmm. then I think you're in danger of hoisting yourself on that empirical petard because the happiest people in this country by far are evangelical Christians and Orthodox Jews, people who live in tight, um, according to Arthur Brooks, when he surveys, uh, when he looks at the, at the, uh, uh, the large-scale surveys, uh, basically the happiest person is a gun-owning, Republican, uh, Christian, uh, right. living in a right. tight community. Yeah. Okay, and there's, the happy there's, there's a few caveats there. One is, how we find That's out, books, Th this right? is why we don't have a neuroscience, I mean, we don't have a neuroscience of human flourishing, and because we don't, we have questionnaires where people report their level of happiness. You know the biases, I mean, you know, if you give a questionnaire to a fundamentalist Christian, Christian, are you hopeful about wait, the wait, future? Look, Sam, you know, what, you get Sam a, a but look what you're doing here, bias. look what you're doing here. We have empirical evidence. The empirical evidence is extremely consistent. Yeah. What do you do when faced with it? You go straight for, oh, but look no, at all no, these no, exceptions, I'll, look at all these problems. I, I will grant the you scientific so, so, spirit so, means you should at least look at the evidence, absolutely. take it at face value. I have and looked at it, and I believe it some be of right. it is probably true. In fact, if you put me in Afghanistan, uh, I would be guaranteed to be very unhappy. You know, the lone atheist Imagine, who won't yeah. veil his daughter, right? That's a, that's a recipe for disaster. So, yes, if you put me in Afghanistan, I'm sure I'm going to become happier if my daughter wears a burqa and I c somehow conform to them. And, and, and so you're, you're talking about a study done in the United States based on uh, uh, conformity with a culture where 83% of people believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. If you go to Denmark, which by similar methodologies is, is rated the happiest country, the happiest society on the planet, they are essentially an atheistic society. Um, so you can, you can right. run it both so that, ways. Right, so there, there are multiple means, there are multiple ends, and I did, I liked that in your talk. You did say that there were like multiple maxima and minimum, and I would agree with that. But you seem to have great faith in your ability to detect which ones are valid and which ones are not, based on your own intuitions. I have, I have faith in the human ability, unencumbered by dogmatism and political correctness, to ultimately converge on these things. On principles like cruelty is wrong, on principle like, principles like free discussion and full transparency of information uh, is better than its antithesis. And I think we have that in hand to a gr degree in our liberally biased elitist culture in a way that uh, some of our conservative opponents in this culture don't, uh, and uh, certainly they don't ha have it well in hand in Afghanistan at the moment. And th this is a moral hierarchy that I think we just have to be honest about. And yes, by your lights, when we find pathologies of liberalism, we have to be honest about that. And there are pathologies of liberalism. I mean, and you sent me a paper, a Pizarro paper, talking about how liberals were more inclined to be uh, uh, in certain moral dilemmas, li liberals are more inclined to, s to sacrifice a, a white person to save uh, many non-whites, but not a, a non-white to save many whites. Uh, and conservatives are more colorblind. And so this is a kind of a pathology of, of uh, fairness in, li in, in liberals. But yes, let's have all the facts on the table. But what I'm, what I'm objecting to in your work, and, and, and Joshua Green is certainly culpable here, and I've read his thesis on this, um, uh, there is a moral, there is a, there, there is, there are no facts of the matter about morals thesis. Uh, uh, and I mean, that's the punchline. We can't say that this is really, really wrong because the people who hate homosexuals are just as committed to their view. End of story. But that's not